How's it going YouTube? My name is Sherbert and this is a super people tutorial you actually need. Now super people has a lot of really good things going for it at the moment and has potential to be one of the next big games in the battle royale genre. However, the skill ceiling can be quite high and with the integration of leveling, crafting and the use of ultimates, newer players may be left scratching their heads confused and unsure how to improve or what even to expect during their first game. The in-game tutorial is very, very basic and in my opinion does a mediocre job teaching new players what to expect during an actual game. It's common knowledge that WASD moves and left trigger shoots, but what they may not know is how to craft better weapons and armor or how to use their abilities to increase their chances of winning. This video is going to go over the basics and all the things I wish I knew when I first started playing Super People. We'll also look at one of my previous matches to break down my gameplay and showcase what I'm looking for. So let's jump right into it. Super People can best be described as a mix between PUBG and Apex. The gameplay looks and feels very similar to PUBG, but gives off an Apex vibe with the use of abilities and ultimates. The word that can be best used to describe Super People is, well, random. Each game is completely different from the last. Lobby size, circle rotation, class selection, and specialized weapons are all completely random, making no two games the same. This is both good and bad. Good in a sense that it keeps the replayability high. Because no two matches are the same, the gameplay feels fresh and the strategies are constantly changing. But bad in a sense because it's challenging for newer players trying to get a grip on the game while having to deal with all the randomness. There are 12 classes to play as in Super People, each with its own skill set and ultimate. As you level, you'll begin to unlock different abilities for your skill tree that will help you gain the upper hand on your opponent. There are three perk tiers to level from, red, green, and blue each unlocking something unique to their character. At the beginning of each match, a class will be randomly assigned for you to play as. You can pay in-game currency to either have another class randomly given to you or pay extra and choose the class you'd like to play as. Unfortunately, the only way to know what each class does is to load into a game and look at the abilities before you jump. There are plenty of written guides on the web that do an adequate job explaining the classes and their abilities, and I would recommend giving it a once-over to learn how to play each class. I'll put a link in the description to a good site that I use. I'd recommend playing all of the classes at least once to understand their playstyle, but finding two or three classes that you really enjoy playing as and rotate between those. For example, I play Shotgun Master, Strike Force, and Seeker. Now these are three high mobility classes that blend well with my playstyle. Find the class you play best as and stick with those. These might change as you play, but it's always a good idea to have a favorite. Still with me? Good. Now before you jump out of the helicopter for the first time, there are some things you should know. First is your specialized weapon. Now this can be a little tricky, but bear with me. Much like how the class gets randomly assigned to you at the beginning of each match, so does your specialized weapon. You'll be able to know what your weapon is by looking above the skill tree. This is important because the weapon you get assigned for that match will also do additional damage. For example, I loaded in with a driver whose specialized weapon is the AKM. As you level and unlock the specialized damage skill, the AKM will begin to do more damage. At level 3, my AKM will have an additional 30% damage boost just for me using that weapon. It's important to note that you don't have to use your specialized weapon if you don't want to, but by using the weapon you've been assigned, it will greatly increase your chances of winning that firefight. Now that we know about your class and your weapon, it's time to get into the game. While in the pre-game lobby, open up the map to see where you'll be dropping. You'll see the location of the starting circle as well as how big the lobby will be. Each map will have between 40 to 60 players and the starting circle will vary depending on the size of the lobby. Be sure to also click the arrow on the left hand side of the map to see exactly how many people are playing any particular class. If you are a newer player, I would recommend landing farther away from the drop route. There are plenty of random buildings sprinkled throughout the map that have a bunch of loot, so don't feel like you have to drop at a big name location in order to get anything good. Once you've picked a drop location, you'll need to get there. If you picked a location that is far away from the drop route, you'll want to deploy your parachute early and hold the left control button to glide. This will slow your descent and allow you to travel farther. On the flip side, you can hold the shift button to descend faster for a speedy landing. This can be very helpful when landing at a hot drop. The few seconds you gain by descending quickly can be the difference between life and death. Regardless of where you choose to land, once you're close to the ground, you'll be given the option to cut your parachute. Go ahead and do so whenever you'd like. You won't receive fall damage from cutting your chute, but be careful. You'll only be safe for that first initial contact. If you land on a roof and then fall from the roof onto the ground, you'll receive fall damage. So be smart when you decide to cut your parachute. 
You'll also want to pay attention as to how many people are landing with you. Be mindful of your surroundings and how many bad guys might be in the area. After your boots hit the ground, it's time to make a mad dash to loot up and start blasting fools. Start by getting your hands on the first gun and armor you can find. You'll want to arm yourself as quickly as you can to give you a fighting chance on any early game fights. Now, looting and crafting can be one of the more complicated things about super people. Let me rephrase that. Crafting is the most difficult thing about super people. So let's unpack it. In super people, the players with the better guns and armor tend to be the ones that win the most fights. There are five tiers of armor in super people. Common gray armor being level 1 and heroic orange armor being the highest at level 5. The higher the armor, the more incoming damage gets resisted. Your armor does have a certain amount of durability, and the more you're shot, the lower that durability becomes. Once fully depleted, your armor will provide no additional defense boost, and it will be as if you're not wearing armor at all. On the flip side of that, there are seven different types of weapon tiers in super people, but we're only going to focus on the first five. Many new players are under the notion that the best way to get good loot is to simply find it throughout the map, and although that may be true in some instances, the fastest and easiest way to get better loot is to simply craft it. To do so, you'll need at least a common weapon or armor to start. After that, you'll need to pick up the crafting materials that go along with that particular item. These materials will pop up on screen as well as the mini-map, letting you know what you'll need in order to take your gear to the next level. I have a more in-depth crafting video that breaks down the crafting process in its entirety. I'll be sure to put the link in the description down below if you guys want to check it out. But honestly, the best tip I can give you for crafting is to simply just grab every crafting material you can find. Because you'll never know what you need later, it's important to grab everything just in case. Now this doesn't take up any room in your inventory or in your backpack, so feel free to grab everything. Other items you should be on the lookout for are heals and buffs. There are three main healing items in Super People. Compression bandages being the most common. These will restore 10 HP in 2 seconds and have a 2 second casting time. Next is the first aid which will restore 60 HP in 4 seconds and has a 6 second casting time. And lastly the emergency kit which will restore 100% of your HP with a casting time of 6 seconds. Out of the three you'll want to prioritize the first aid kit. They heal for a lot very quickly and will only require one or two to get you back into the fight. A common mistake players make is loading up on a bunch of compression bandages. Because they're so common, many players may unknowingly hoard a metric buttload, taking up all the room in their inventory. This may become problematic when you're unable to pick up any more items and have to drop dozens and dozens of bandages just to make room. The next items you should be on the lookout for are energy bars and super capsules. Energy bars provide a 90 per second boost depending on what kind of bar is eaten. The blue bar increases your speed, the red bar increases your damage, and lastly the teal bar increases your defense. What's cool about the teal defense bar is that if your armor is weakened, by eating a defense bar you can actually restore your armor durability which will in turn keep you alive longer. We also have an energy bar guide video, I'll be sure to put that in the link in the description below as well. Next are the super capsules. These are super important and very very good. These not only level you up but also unlock a skill from that skill tree. There are five different color capsules that can be found throughout the map and will unlock different skills depending on the color. For example, the blue capsule will unlock a skill on the blue tree, the red capsule will unlock a skill on the red tree, and green for the green tree. Now the white capsule will unlock a skill randomly out of the three color trees, and lastly gold being the rarest, will unlock a random ability to its max. You're going to want to pop these as quickly as you can. They won't do you any good sitting in your inventory, so be sure to eat these when it's safe in order to level up quickly. Now speaking of leveling up, Leveling in this game is critical. The higher the level, the more your stats will increase and the more abilities you'll unlock. The biggest milestone is level 10, when players unlock their ultimate. This can be Strike Force's Leap, SWAT's Blackout, Marine's Fog of War. Each ultimate is a force to be reckoned with, so it's crucial to get your ultimate as quickly as you can. Leveling can be done in three different ways. The first is securing a kill. The second is eating super capsules. And lastly, the third is just simply surviving. You'll naturally level up after the close of each zone. This is great for players who are still starting out and may not want to get any firefights right away. As you level, you'll also notice the three icons above your ultimate start to increase. These are your base stats. From left to right, you'll see damage, movement speed, and health. The higher you are in level, the more these stats will increase. Now that you're all caught up with the looting and leveling, it's time to talk about shooting. Again, the tutorial just doesn't do any justice in preparing you for the onslaught that's to come. Each gun has a certain amount of recoil and spray pattern, and it's up to you to figure out which guns work best depending on your playstyle. Currently, some guns just perform better than others. For example, the M416S is considered to be one of the best guns in the game, and will be used by the majority of the player base. 
whereas the G3 is considered to be one of the worst guns in the game due to its recoil, low damage, and fire rate. Regardless of which guns you decide to use, a big tip that can help you land more shots is to hold your breath while aiming down the sights. By pressing and holding the shift button, you can hold your breath for more accuracy and tighter bullet spray. This can be done with any weapon and it's not exclusive to just snipers or DMRs. However, you can only hold your breath for a certain amount of time before you have to let it go and let your stamina bar return to normal. This can be seen at the very bottom of your screen by looking at the lungs icon. Like any shooter, positioning is key. Try to avoid engagements that are out in the open without any cover. With the ability to lean both left and right, it's important to engage from different angles to keep your opponent guessing. Don't worry too much if you find yourself losing these firefights. Take this opportunity to realize how and why you died. This can be very important in preventing the same mistake in any future matches. Is it, um, I should have I should have peeked that corner a little harder. I, I totally would give up my cover. If you are curious as to how to improve your gunfighting skills or want to learn more advanced moves, be sure to check out our advanced tips and tricks video. Another big thing about Super People is the use of your ultimates. Because the game only touches on Nuclear's ultimate, it doesn't prepare you for the variety of different skills and abilities that can be used by other characters. I won't go into too much detail about the class's ultimates, but if you would like for me to make a more detailed guide explaining what each class and their ultimate does, let me know in the comment section down below. But what I can recommend is you using your ult as often as you can. Your ultimate can be a huge asset into winning these fights, and it doesn't do you any good holding onto it. Because most ults are up every 60 seconds, you can essentially have it ready for every engagement. Your ultimate isn't going to do you any good back in the lobby, so be sure to use it as often as you can. Now that we've covered the basics, let's break down some actual gameplay and what to expect. For this demonstration, I loaded in as Gas Soldier with an SA-12K as my specialized weapon. Just like every match, I'm going to start by opening up the map and looking at the circle and the direction in which the drop route is going. This is going to help me determine where I want to land. For this example, I decided to land at airport. I'm going to mark the airport POI in my map to show how far away it is and when the best time it is to jump. I noticed I have another player right next to me. We're neck to neck and I know I have to beat him to the landing if I want to survive. Once close enough, I cut my parachute as soon as I'm able to to get on the ground as fast as possible. Next, I find a gun quickly because I know there is one enemy close by. I try to find armor but don't see any available. Now I did hear him land outside of the hangar where I know there's no loot, so I'm confident about pushing him without any body armor. I aim down the sights while holding my breath for a more accurate shot and spray and bursts. Now that he is dead, I can loot the entire hangar more thoroughly. I'm looking for anything of value, keeping my eye out for health, armor, and crafting materials. Once I grab everything of value in this hangar, I start moving to the next. As I'm crafting, I hear footsteps to the right of the hangar and a missed sniper shot whizzed by my head. I press F to cancel my crafting and engage the player. Again, holding my breath for a tighter bullet spray and kill the second player who I didn't see land with us. Because the player came from this hangar, I assume he has all the good loot. I loot him and continue moving to the next. Survival bonus. Now the common M4 I found on the ground is an advanced blue M4. Again, taking all the super capsules as soon as I find them.
Now at level 10, I have access to my ultimate, which is the flamethrower. Now this is an incredibly powerful ultimate, and I feel very confident that I will win the next fight if I come across anyone. I take a little bit of fall damage here, which is perfectly fine. Because I know there is nobody behind me, I'm looting very casually. I notice I can't pick up any more items and I do a quick inventory management, removing anything I don't need. I noticed I had left a few crafting items behind me and backtracked to pick them up. Survival bonus. Now I'm running to receive my personal container. This will contain a specialized weapon. The weapon rarity does vary, so it can range anywhere between a rare purple to a legendary gold. Now that common in four that I had found on the ground is level five, which is the highest you can craft to. I see two players fighting ahead of me and I run to engage, popping a power bar for increased damage. I see an enemy emerge from the fight. With the element of surprise on my side, I start the fight off with my ultimate, which will go through the shack and hit the shotgun master. With much of his HP already gone, I finish up with my M4 for the kill. So that's a quick demonstration of what to expect on an actual game. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions or you would like a specific video made, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I also stream right here on YouTube Monday through Friday morning specific standard time, so be sure to stop in and say hi. Alright guys, that's it for this video, I hope you all have a great day and stay super.